Formula One and motorsports in general often pride themselves on diversity and inclusion for people from different walks of life. For example, car racing is in a very select category of sports that don't separate men and women, like in other major sports such as football. F1 Academy exists, but that's just a patronising PR stunt that contradicts every single point it sets out to achieve. Another thing motorsport has is that it can often cross over into mainstream audiences and topics. F1 has had its fair share of media coverage in films and documentaries such as Rush and Senna, cartoons such as McLaren's Toon series, which they need to bring back by the way, and has also had representation in the music industry. Lewis Hamilton appeared on a song with Christina Aguilera in 2018, and dated popular artist Nicole Scherzinger for several years. Furthermore, fans of a certain age will remember when coverage of the F1 races was preceded by an iconic section from the song The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. However, as much as music and other forms of media have become intertwined with our great sport, there is a great story of the strongest link between motorsport and the music charts. Let me tell you the story of Slim Borgood, one of the most multi-talented individuals to grace the sport of Formula One. The idea of F1 drivers having musical talents is nothing new. Lewis Hamilton is a recent example, along with ex Toro Rosso driver Jaime Aldrasuari, who is now a DJ. Elio De Angelis, who drove for Lotus in the 1980s and was a criminally underrated driver, was also a trained pianist to entertain the F1 group when they were all put up in a hotel room together during the 1982 South African Grand Prix boycotts. Another gifted musician who raced in Formula 1 was the Swede, Slim Borgud. His racing career started in the mid 1960s driving Formula Ford cars, but as his aspirations grew in 1972, he took a clean sweep of victories in local sports car club racing events. Borgud then drove in the Swedish Touring Car Championship until 1975, driving Hillman Imps and Volvo 122s. He also won the Scandinavian Formula Ford Series in 1973. He moved up to Swedish and European Formula 3 in 1976 and won the 1979 Swedish Championship as well as taking third in the European Series behind a runaway Alain Prost and runner-up Michael Blekemolen. He only raced in the F3 Monaco Grand Prix in 1980, where he finished third after his bodywork came loose on one side, and so he had to drive one-handed while holding his car together, Jim Clark-esque. Then in 1981, Borgud finally made his F1 debut driving the German team ATS at the San Marino Grand Prix, and impressively outqualified his teammate Jan Lammers by three tenths of a second. Another thing of note was the personal sponsors the Swede brought to the table for the race. He had the most typically Swedish sponsor you could possibly have. That is apart from IKEA. It was the logos of legendary music group ABBA that were on the side of the ATS car. Borgud was a session drummer for the group and had known two of the members since before they were famous, so the group allowed Slim to place their logos on his cars without any payment in order to gain attention and publicity and potentially bringing paying sponsors to the table for whichever team Borgud raced for. He finished last and 13th in three laps down in his first race, then failed to qualify for the Belgian Grand Prix, then didn't pre-qualify for the Monegasque race, then failed to qualify for both the Spanish and the French Grand Prix. Then came Silverstone. The Super Swede dragged his ATS onto the grid in 21st place, then only 11 cars were classified by race end. Borgard was 6th and thus scored 1 point, scoring ATS's first point since the 1979 US Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. I really want to make a Mamma Mia joke, but I won't. So it seems that the team found their man after midnight then. After that however, just like his first name, Borgard's chances of replicating that result were slim. His rest of season form consisted of the best result of 10th place in Zandvoort, 4 DNFs and a DNQ at the season finale at the Caesars Palace Grand Prix in Las Vegas. Following his supposedly impressive showings in 1981, he was signed to drive for Tyrrell for 1982, however a combination of poor results and a lack of real sponsorship left him in an SOS situation as he was fired three races into the season. No other F1 teams would take a chance on him however, so his career ended in the top echelon of motorsport. He then bounced around between racing series, driving in the Macau Grand Prix in 1984 and 85, then driving in F3000 also in 1985. He also took part in the Le Mans 24-hour race in 1987, but made his biggest post-F1 mark in truck racing, where he would win numerous championships until his retirement in 1997, age 51. He raced several times at amateur level until his death age 76 earlier this year, in February 2023. Slim Borgud was a good driver and had a great story, drumming for one of the most iconic music groups of all time and driving in the most iconic motorsport of all time. He's a legend of both F1 and music and it's a shame that no one else really knows this story. With that being said, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please like, subscribe and comment if you'd like me to cover another story next time. Also, please follow my Instagram and Patreon, links are in the description. I've been Nedzo and I'll see you all later. Bye.